Hey everybody, before you listen to the show, two quick things. I hope you and your loved ones are safe, happy and healthy. Secondly, stop right now. If you haven't already, check out our free to access conveyance and service for mortgage brokers and estate agents. Mortgage brokers must check out our free to access services at the mortgagebrokerclub.co.uk including over 25 categories of mortgage broker tools. Stay well, and I hope you enjoy the show. Welcome to the MLC Show for Property Professionals. I am your host, Sean Rogers, and I'm delighted to be joined on today's show by Graham Wilson of Tracker Hub and Options Mortgage Centre. How are you, Graham? Yeah, do you know what, Sean? I'm very grateful. I'm even more all right in the fact that I'm actually with you at the minute, Sean, spending a bit of my Friday feeling with Sean Rogers, the man himself. So I'm very grateful for you having me, Sean. Thank you. I love it. For those of you who might be listening to this on a, on a podcast or um, or whatever, you're really missing out on Graham's background. He's got this beautiful place by the sea. Um, I have, a- I have, yeah, yeah. yeah. Just, I moved in. Uh, people do comment on the fact that I need some more uh, uh, wine in the fridge and what have you. But aside from that, people obviously do think that sometimes it's a Zoom background, but I am a secret multi multi billionaire of course yeah it's i'm worried about the glass like i mean you know that looks a fairly dip what 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 ocean is that i mean that 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 looks like it could be cold the black pool they call it the black pool oceanette so this is the black pool ocean it's not on the world map but it should be yeah so uh, don't don't let the distortion fool you it's real there's going to be a shopping trolley drifting past in the background whilst we're doing the show. All my underpants, exactly right. <laughs> yeah, the underpants in the background. But no, we're doing all right, thank you, Sean, and uh, and thanks for having me. No problem. Tell us about your early career, please, Graham. You know what led to you becoming a mortgage broker in the first place, uh, and well, your options. Well, do you know, well, I was born at a very early age. I went to school with children, and funnily enough, talking about school that leads me nicely into talking about my mum. Um, she had a friend called Jean the Cleaner, Jean Makinson. I'll give her a shout out. Uh, Jean Makinson the Cleaner at St. John's Primary School and her daughter uh, who worked for Royal Bank of Scotland uh, as I left school when I was 16 said, oh, well, they're asking for people at Royal Bank. Why didn't they come and have a job interview at 16 years of age at Royal Bank in 1999? Giving me age away now. Um, but, But one thing that's funny about it is that I went for a job interview at Dixon's, didn't get it. Went for a job interview at Tesco's, didn't get it. And uh, and yeah, it turned out that Royal Bank of Scotland was willing to give a 16-year-old Graham the opportunity to join the world of finance. So that's that's how I got into that. I was with Royal Bank till was, well, 2007, actually, till the year 2007. Uh, and then from then on, I was at Santander. So Santander from then on, 2011, became a broker. And uh, it was funny. You know, funny old times, Sean. We, I started on the count. In fact, I started doing kids' accounts, keying kids' accounts, rainbow accounts, and all them carry on for kids. Um, and then the students that would come over from abroad, I would key them and just doing all the mundane stuff whilst listening to a mini disc. Billy Joel on repeat, it was great. Or Bruce Springsteen, even more fantastic. Um, you say, What are you listening to, you? Billy Joel. Again, that was all I was listening to. Kids like that, keying them. Billy Joel. River of Dreams. Uh, and, and yeah, so that's kind of how it worked, it worked out. I, I was never really meant to be in finance. It wasn't really something that I'd chosen as a career. I wanted to be a drama teacher. But hey, presto, did a bit of stand-up comedy as well. Started Charlie FM amidst Royal Bank of Scotland. I've done everything, all my passions. I'm very lucky. I'm only 37 now, coming up 38 and extremely good looking like yourself. Um, but that's a grudge that we have to bear. It's the looks. Uh, and then 2011... Uh, I left uh, Rob, uh, Santander, left Santander. I thought, Do you know what? At that point in time, um, my dad was diagnosed with a terminal illness. Uh, my wife was pregnant with me, uh, daughter Ella, and, uh, and my mum was diagnosed with breast cancer. And this was all in 2011. And my very good friend, Rick, who I was sending business to from Santander through IFA for intermediaries, he was doing a great job. And I thought, how come he's doing more business than I am and I work in a bank. And I thought to myself, there must be a reason. And the fact that he could actually do all the lenders, all the providers, all the assurance, I thought, if you can't beat them, join them. And going back to the big three, you know, the cancer, idiopathic fibrosis for my dad and my wife having a little one, I thought, if I don't do it now, I'm never going to do it. 
And that's how it worked out. So 2011, I became a broker. 2013, I bought into the practice. Options Mortgage Centre, you mentioned that a minute ago, Sean. I bought into that back in 2013 as an equal partner. And then we grew it ever since. You know, we were quite fortunate. We've just taken on three more advisors. Um, sadly, Santander, fully enough, they're going through redundancies at the minute. Um, so people need a home. You know, advisors do need homes. And thankfully, we're there for them. So... Yeah, it's been a ride, Sean, absolutely. And then, of course, Track Rub came to mix uh, back in 2018. But, of course, that's what we're going to have a chat about in a second, isn't it? So that's that's my career in a nutshell, really. And are you enjoying it? What, my career? You, well, that as well. Are you, are, you, are you enjoying sort of the dual role, especially are you enjoying being a mortgage broker? Yeah, do you know, I, I love being a mortgage broker. You've got two hats, haven't you, really, running a company. You've got the company hat, which is um, your compliance, your staffing, your payroll, your your costings, your everything All else. Running, stuff. running a business, yeah. yeah. All the sexy stuff. All the sexy stuff, yeah, yeah. You're working out your margins, your profit margins and everything such as. And then you've got your other hat, which is the broker side. And I, and I really enjoy being a broker, you know, just this morning, you know, did a, an income protection plan for somebody. £13 a month. But you think to yourself, it's not just the premium. The, the client's covered for £700 a month now. After four weeks, if he's ill, he's injured, his wife's provided for and, and his family's provided for. And you can't do that in many other jobs. You change people's lives. I've had payouts for cancer only a few weeks back for clients. I've saved people pounds on the mortgage. You know, I saved somebody yesterday four years off the mortgage and they ended up paying £3 more a month. That just shows you the difference between interest rates then and now. Uh, going from Kensington as a lender to a, a, a high street provider, Nat West, this one was in this case. So, yeah, to name but a few, it's brilliant. I enjoy it. And then, and then of course, the rewards from that leads into the fact that I can then develop systems um, whereby it can help the broker and enhance the broker. And I'll be honest with you, from a selfish point of view, back in 2018, I started building Track Rub for my company. It wasn't meant for anybody else. I, I wanted it to be for Options Mortgage Centre. But then I thought, yeah, do you know what? A real gap in the market for something like a Tracker Hub system, um, being able to actually give real-time updates to introducers and give them a dashboard. I mean, I, I don't know how you find it, Sean, um, but spreadsheets, for instance, I mean... You, you can have a spreadsheet for a spreadsheet and for spreadsheet's sake. Oh, 100%. And then, of course, you know, GDPR and stuff like that nowadays as well, the way that um, people, you know, you also, I, I think it's going to be watered down a little bit, but the initial sort of GDPR sanctions, um, as you'd imagine, will probably be quite strict liability in a way. So, um, you know, they're only rumours, but of course, you know, um, you know, everyone loves a good gossip, but there were rumours that that was the new thing for like quite high end hackers that yeah. they were basically open to hire, and that basically what they'd actually do is try and steal your email list, and even and all they need is to steal it. In essence, they could probably pop it up online overnight, um, and especially for the bigger organisations, you've then got the duty to write to all your clients, tell them that you've potentially lost their email address, offer yeah. them compensation, and then you see this 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 uh boom in you know potentially like gdpr breach claims and stuff data breach claims and these kind of things so it'll be interesting to see how the court sort of play that out because whilst the regs have got to be very um clear if you like um you know it's very difficult to keep up with the hackers especially for your bigger organizations you know you could have probably something like kpmg come in for a quarter of a million quid and do your gdpr and stuff and you still might be playing catch up on the 22 year old kid in his room who you know people offer silly money to just to yeah, try exactly. and, you know, uh, 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 yeah, those spreadsheets um yeah you know spreadsheets not you know probably the end is nigh for them how long you know this you know this decade i guess but yeah i mean you know the, the more the, the better people can do to move away from them if you like and the quicker people can move away from them the better for so many reasons well, funny she's out. Back in 2011, I was saying about the big three things that happened in my life, uh, and you make the jump, but then you make the jump to being self-employed and being working in an employed environment such as Santander. So, so from that, you think to yourself, gosh, it really is all on you. It's all on you as a self-employed broker to bring the money in and to go out there and network with estate agents, solicitors, 
uh, accountants, all the people that potentially could reach out to clients that obviously need mortgages, they've got access to people who've got needs for protection, etc. Um, so then I thought to myself, right, well, how can I keep them updated? So back then, I did fill a spreadsheet out. I thought to myself, I'll share it on a Google Drive eventually, because that's probably more secure than actually have it password protected and this, that and the other. And gosh, I'll tell you. And then it got to the fact that over the years, I'd built up that bit of a community because people thought, oh, I'll ring Graham or you need to speak to Graham or an estate agent to email me the lead. And you think to yourself, I need more. I need more advisors. And before you know it, these spreadsheets grew. It's kind of like off gremlins. But, you know, you put water on it and these spreadsheets just exploded. And these spreadsheets were popping up. Yeah, gizmo. Yeah, exactly. So um, spreadsheets were popping all over the place. And I thought to myself, this ain't right. Surely there's something easier than this. Um, and plus, they weren't easy to read. You know, you couldn't just look at it and think, oh, what am I earning from Graham this week? And I had to update it. So come Saturday, I could spend three hours updating spreadsheets. And my little girl would be at the side of me saying, Dad, I, I need to go to my dance lessons. Dad, I need to go swimming. Dad, I need feeding. I can't, Ella. Cannot. You need these spreadsheets updated. Um, so that's kind of how that went, really. And I Googled it. I thought, introduce a tracking. Nothing on Google. Referral tracking, nothing on Google. I could never find anything that was perfect. And CRM systems, for instance, they have a job to do. They're not really sales-driven systems. They are a CRM, client relationship management system, whatever it would be. So on that basis, I don't I don't say it's their fault that they don't have an introducer dashboard or they don't have introduced capabilities. They're just not keyed to it. And they're not often they're not built by the broker for the broker. So um just by pure fortunate happiness um through pure luck um i met somebody back in 2018 so he's my co-founder jonathan wright um back in 2018 and i told them the concept i said i've got these spreadsheets i share them with the introducer they can see it online i said but it looks horrendous it's not brill it's all manual and he went my god he said one he couldn't believe that i'm using a spreadsheet two he said why don't i get something that i could use instead of building my own i said there's nothing uh, and then, yeah, it can't, Tracker Hub kind of grew from there, Sean, and uh, we are where we are. And we, we, we started developing it back in October 2017, it would have been. 2018, it would have launched. Then we're in 19 and 20. So we've got over 500 users now on the platform, which are actively using it. But, but the story was, I wanted dashboards for the introducer so they can get real-time updates. I wanted a system for the broker that's easy to use. And when you show it to people, they just kind of get it because it's built by the broker, for the broker, and also for the introducer. And then it's kind of just born out of necessity, really. People do need something like this to um, to make it easier. So I, I do take my daughter on, on time now to the dance lessons and on time for the swimming, all thanks to Tracker Hub. So if you've got timetables for kids, you need Tracker Hub in really? your life. There's, and there isn't a better feature than that, is there really? In there's no, there's no, I've never had a CRM system that makes it so I can take my daughter on time to the zoo. Um, Following on from that, what are, you know, for someone who, you know, what are the key features then for the broker? What what does it actually allow the broker to do? So, yeah. a, a broker registers for the platform. What are the benefits to them? So, so effectively, with Tracker Hub, how it works is um, your company would sign up. Um, it's based on the number of advisors and number of introducers, of course. You get a core usage of Tracker Hub itself within the system, um, and you can then issue dashboards to all your introducers. And the great news then is it's really easy to update them. If you've got your own CRM system, that's absolutely fine. It's a bit of a no-brainer pricing, very cheap to run. Um, and then what you can also do with this system is, is run it almost like a social media type style system where you'll bob into it throughout the day, you'll bob out of it. Kind of like you do with Facebook, your LinkedIn's and your Twitters. And what I'm finding the user base using it like is exactly that. So they'll go into it, they'll get notifications about new leads that have come in, any feedback from introducers. And also the fact that um, as and when you pay introducers, so you might get the procuration fee for a mortgage and a broker fee, it then flags you to pay that introducer then. And it's got a little box button that you would press to say, yeah, I'm going to pay the introducer 200 quid and then it flags instantly on the introducer dashboard. So it's anything to make it easy um, for both the advisor and for the introducer. And then the introducer then at, at year end, at their year end, they can pull off um, a back payment report 
for their accountant to show exactly what they've been paid. So you don't even have to create invoices or payment schedules or anything like that. The system does it all for you, Sean. That, that's a real winner with that. And there's loads more to it, but it's the simplicity that works. Plus, we've got Refer a Friend. Uh, that just sits on your website. Clients can refer, and it all feeds into your Tracker Hub system. And then the winner is what me and you were talking about just before you press record on the Zoom. Uh, we were talking about business to business, and you've seen it. Um, with business to business, what will happen is uh, if you sign up, you're solicited to Tracker Hub, uh, you sign up your accountant, your surveyor, an associate, uh, a firm like yours, Sean, um, you know, as, a, as far as you go, we could actually send leads to your firm, vice versa, you can send them to us. Real-time updates on B2B. And I, I mean, correct me if I'm wrong, I've never seen a system that, that allows that yet. So that's why we've created it. Well, if I'm a, if I'm a broker, I might be saying, well, I'm rammed. I like, there's not enough hours in the day at the moment work-wise anyway. And that's without um, any hobbies, any family, um, running, running the house, <laughs> trying to cope with everything that's going on in the world right now. Um, trying to keep an eye on you know marketing um you know the end of the year coming so it'll be tax return time etc cetera, etc cetera. um yeah you know another web app another thing to log into another thing to sign up for you know I'm gonna have to try and get used to the system um but I understand kind of the benefits in terms of future saving time how easy is it to sign up and hit the ground running in terms of yeah. using the system yeah, it's really easy. Um, and I suppose you'll be saying, but you will say that, Graham, it's your system. But I'll be honest, if a broker creates a system, I'm not going to make it hard. Although what I will say is it's like Steve Jobs said, it's hard to make something easy, but it's easy to make something hard. Be careful how you say that, by the way. You better not edit that and frame me. <laughs> um, but yeah. So I'll be honest with you, it is hard work creating a system that's very easy to use. And we've been beta testing the 2.0 version. And the idea being, yeah, you have got a lot of apps and time is precious. And what's key is the fact that you use that time wisely. And what Tracker Hub's done for my firm, I can only speak for me. I, I can't see any data from any other firms or what they're doing. But the only feedback they give is the same that I'm giving, which is it saves me time. It's very efficient. You bob in and bob out. Um, eventually, I'm hoping the big picture is we may well link up with other CRM systems. But at the minute, my users like the fact that it's actually not built in. They like the fact that it's separate. Um, we're going to have a challenge starting with 2.0. It's called the 22-minute challenge. If you can't learn that new system within 22 minutes, then honestly, I'll be shocked. So there's going to be a 22-minute challenge. Learn the system, you'll bob in it, you'll bob out of it, and I guarantee in 22 minutes you'll be able to use it. That's the time frame that we've spent at the minute beta testing. And within 22 minutes, virtually everybody within that time has said, Graham, I get it. I'm a technophobe as well. I don't usually really uh, get technology. 22-minute challenge. Yeah. And plus it saves you hours. We, I've worked out, it probably saves me about six hours a week, uh, between four and six hours with... With what it does and the fact that I can pull off reports as easy as a couple of clicks of a button, um, update spreadsheets are no longer. I've not got to um, work out formulas and everything such as. It just does it all for you, Sean. So 22 minute, minute challenge. If your listeners or your viewers are up for it, I'm all up for it. Myself. I'll give 30 day free trials out. Uh, I'll, I'll, I'll show them how to use it. We'll do Zoom calls like we do here, but... Honestly, it, it, it's easy. And the feedback in real time, we've almost made it like a WhatsApp now. So when you signed into the product, so let's say you get, I don't know, let's say you send me a mortgage referral. Um, it's all encrypted. So you were talking about e like emails, for instance, not encrypted, GDPR. Referrals are all encrypted. Key data is all encrypted. Uh, we sit on a London server as well. So it's all in the UK. So we're all fully geared up and compliant. Um, but when you send me that lead in real time, I can feed back. And there's a cool feedback that looks exactly like a certain WhatsApp. Um, and on there, it'll sit on there. It's got my picture on there, which obviously looks amazing. It'll have your picture on there, which obviously may look amazing. And, and, and then literally on that basis, uh, we're connected instantly. It's an extension via that product. If you send me more, we connect. And it's all about making that bridge between somebody who's willing to send you business and somebody who's willing to do the business. Might not be a mortgage advisor, 
might be a solicitor, send them the business, might be a builder, put them on. If you've got leads for a builder, they can update you. And I'll tell you what's really cool. I've got a surveyor that I do business with and I signed him up. He works in Blackburn. Great guy, William Rogers. He's on Tracker Hub. I send him leads. Great surname. I hope he spells it right. Absolutely. I send him leads and then literally he bounces the leads back to myself, so vice versa. But also he uploads the home buyer survey or the building survey onto Tracker Hub, gets permission from his clients that he can do it, ticks the relevant boxes, and instantly I can share that with the solicitor because the solicitor's on Tracker Hub as well. Everybody's got access. It's uh, it is it's it's a hybrid version between a CRM between social media, it's just right. It just sits in the middle, Sean. Marvellous. And where, I mean, you've touched on it. Where, what can we look forward to in the next year or two in terms of where you and Jonathan want to want to take track of? Yeah, well, we're in big talks with various networks, uh, talks with yourself as well about what we can potentially do together. But, but also the fact that it will grow, I'm sure of it. And I want more people on the system to make use of the B2B because I think we all need to stick together um, this is a platform that's here to stay. I really do believe that, and it's really needed. If I if I searched for eight years looking for looking for this, which is exactly what I wanted to find, people must be doing the same out there. So, I think from my point of view, we're going to be launching um, two point probably December stroke January. We'll continue development on that. We've got ideas that you can upload documentation. That's a good feature. Share documents with introducers and vice versa, all compliantly and encrypted. So we've got loads going on. Then um, we move into Australia, Canada, et cetera, et cetera. But the all the all C and I is in the UK at this minute in time. So this is where we're focused on. And, and, and honestly, it'll change your business. And if it doesn't, I'll give you your money back. No problem. Because it's I've got that much of a guarantee. Well, just before I get your thoughts on a couple of things in yeah. the the, at the moment um, that's a good place just to remind people obviously you can find out more about Tracker Hub directly um, at the Tracker Hub website we'll be putting loads of stuff about Tracker Hub on our website across all our social channels and everything else so keep your eye on uh, the Mortgage Broker Club and, and obviously all the social feeds and personally I'll be putting stuff out there as well so you'd be sick of the sight of us, um, I suppose, soon, and links to track up. Yeah, it's not possible, actually. It's not possible. <laughs> well, uh, turning to the sector, I'm really interested in your view. So, you know, we're in late 2020, and there's very few lenders sort of in the 90% plus loan to value space. And, and it seems that they all want it. There's many of them that want to go in there, but for obvious reasons, the first one doesn't want to pop their head up because they'll just be battered with a surge of demand. Yeah, all, yeah, yeah, exactly. Although you do say that, but Accord have actually put the flag up, haven't they now? So Accord are actually back in the market and they said they're going to hopefully stay in the 90% bracket. Now, it will take a lender, you'll know yourself, Sean, it'll take a lender to actually do that, to bring other lenders to the forefront. I've been yeah, speaking I'm to... Really a lot of sort of... If one hangs around long enough and can cope long enough, the others will flow. I mean, I'm interested in your in your view that um, in 2021, what do you think the availability of those mortgages will be like? And if they are available for, you know, for, let's assume they're available throughout 2021, how do you think the criteria will change for borrowers? You know, what, what do you think people should be looking out for? Yeah, well, I agree. I, I think 10% deposits will be 50-50. I, I, I don't think we'll see them fully return. 5% deposits are obviously a thing of the past uh, at the minute, sadly. But yeah, I think from what I've been reading, the government's trying to put a package together as to whether they can step in to bring back more 90% deposits, like an indemnity policy. Remember the MIG policy, you know, mortgage indemnity guarantee. So I think the government may actually step in for that. As far as I'm concerned at the minute, the property market is booming. Bank of mum and dad are helping to fund between the 90% or the 95% to a 15% deposit. That's what I am seeing. Whether there's a hybrid version of a mortgage in there, which there are already some out there for now, but they're not helping with deposits. Although in saying that, the, the Barclays Springboard Mortgage, that's a pretty cool one. They're still doing 100%. Uh, as long as mum and dad are hoping to put a 10% deposit in into a bond. Um, and reasons, sorry to jump in, Graham. Is that one of the reasons why maybe you're going to see a lot of brokers maybe doing more training and, and getting their accreditations, perhaps an equity release? Because you actually, you know, you do the, you, you get your clients come through or in whatever order it is, maybe the bank and mum and dad go, we need to do an equity release as an example to then release the funds to 
daughter, son, whatever it is, and that actually then you keep more business under under sort of one roof. It, 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 do you think that's why, in a way, the equity release market is growing to either get the kids out of debt or to get the kids the deposit for the house? Oh, 100%. That's exactly why it's happening. And that's why you've got the hybrids such as the Rio products, you know, the retirement interest only mortgages. And they're there for a reason. I've done a few Rios. And I'll be honest, I think they're great. The interest is good. Uh, some people don't like them because, you know, the fact that they've got to pay interest on it per month, typically, there's no option for roll up on a Rio. But but on that basis, you've got to be sensible. Um, calculate what percentage of the pension goes to the other and vice versa. And if it still works, no reason that you shouldn't consider a Rio. But I totally agree with equity release on that. And, and if you think years and years ago, it's a bit of a taboo, wasn't it? To go through the equity release process, um, people thought, oh, my Lord, you know, they're going to lose the house or this, that and the other. But since regulatory stance has stepped in, you've seen more and more people come to the forefront and it's a multi, multi billion pound market. But it's there for a reason. I've got, you know, I speak to mums and dads all the time and they're having to draw equity out via remortgage. And it's a good point that, Sean. And I think next year we'll see more of it, actually. Mums and dads helping, grandmas, granddads. Exactly. Do you think... There's, there's a lot of people that are quite confident that, um, you know, this uh, bubble, if you, if you if you want, isn't going to burst anytime soon. I suppose there's other people that are quite nervous about March. Uh, I think Help to Buy runs out on the 31st of March. The early scheme is due, I think, to go on the 31st of March. Stamp duty holiday, I imagine, will be extended. But as we record this, it's still in for the 31st of March. That's without considering... Uh, Brexit and also, you know, steep rises recorded by the house price index. I mean, with all of them things going on, um, you know, is it just a case of, um, you know, brokers saying, we'll just jump the next fence that's in front of us, we go month by month? Or do you think there's any reason for concern in terms of what the future of the property market will be, let's say post-March 2021? Yeah, it's a, it's a good point. I mean, you, we've been through, obviously we're in an age where we've been through a good few recessions now, and you go past the last one, which was 2007. But what made my business partner say a lot of the times, especially when brokers ask us the same question, where do you see and hurdles and this, that and the other, but... I think the crux of it is whether you're in a recession or not, people still need property. And when people still need property, because they still need somewhere to live, they might need somewhere to rent. Obviously, that would keep the buy to let market moving. But as far as people would say, I need somewhere to live goes, when they've got somewhere to live, they don't want to be paying SVR. So you've got the product transfer market, which to be fair, we never had uh, really in the last recession. You know, they weren't really paying for PTs back then, but now lenders are. You could argue that, all right, you'd only get 0 0.15, 0 0.2. 0 0.3 is better, um, but it's not going to make up the rest of a purchase or a remortgage. So uh, I think I think I'm right in saying that I think the market will stay steady. I think I think next year, I'd like to think it's going to increase significantly on the basis that people are just that fed up of this year and COVID-19 and the lockdown. They do want to move. And Stirring at the same walls virtually 24 hours a day, you think to yourself, get a bit of cabin, cabin fever and you want to think about... Then cabin fever staring at them four walls in your background. Oh, there, yeah, 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 yeah. Oh, don't let that fool you. Don't let that fool I've got my towels to put away in a minute. Um, so, yeah, so that, that's kind of... I'm not joking, I am. Um, so that's kind of my thoughts on next year, actually. I think it will do well. I, I mean, as far as we're going as a company, you could say COVID's here, but... I, I still think that we've done marvellously well. And, and I think the problem is if you're a one man or one woman band, maybe you've got a question whether it's worth joining up a larger team. Bigger is sometimes better with the support that you do get from, from a, a larger business as well. So I don't know whether it's going to change the land um, that lies ahead. I think maybe it will change the scope of people as to whether they actually do carry on on their own or they join a, another brokerage firm that's uh, got, got you know more admin support. I'd say, Sean, the key to this job really is the admin. You know, it's being able to survive the compliance, the complexities, and and it's forever changing. You mentioned training earlier. You do have to. You've got CPD, of course, um, and, and we're targeted to keep on top and the changes and forever. Um, criteria that changes for instance and furlough we've just had um so yeah so it is difficult i think um if you're not big enough to survive then you may be in trouble but it just depends how your business is set up really 
what what would your view be for brokers looking ahead to next year? Would you see this as an opportunity potentially, or would you see this as something maybe to stay clear of? And I'm interested. It's not my obviously it's not my set down. I'm 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 not knowledgeable enough or experienced in it to comment. But something I'm I'm interested in is the self-employed sector going for the mortgages, the remortgages, and that kind of line of work because. You know, Barclay Card have come out recently and, and, and made a lot of press because anyone with a zero balance or, you know, a high limit, but they're not really using it, they've just slashed them across the board. There's been some people who've gone 15,000 down to 400 quid when they're like one of their best clients. Um, that suggests that Barclay Card are seriously concerned about the levels of credit card debt, the ability to repay it. Like, don't believe in coincidences with Barclay Card. They've always been concerned with that, but they're doing it now. So they're doing it for a reason. You look at the self-employed market in terms of what tax returns might look like for them. You've seen the government say that you can extend various things. Um, is that an opportunity for brokers to go, okay, actually, there's, go there's going to be a lot more work for them and there might not be that many homes for some people. But if I can solve them problems, actually, I've done a great job for them, but I can therefore justify and not just justified, but I can therefore charge greater fees and then I'm a I'm in a niche market. Or would it be I might want to stay clear there and focus more on sort of public sector, if you like, because I know that the pay slips are going to be there. I know they're not going to be nervous about well jobs. you think the trouble is you think they're gonna be there. I mean, look at the redundancy. I touched on Santander earlier in the Zoom. And I used to think that when my mum said, I told you about 1999, going back to the start of this. My mum said, you got a job for life there, Graham, at Royal Bank of Scotland. You've got a job for life. But you don't, actually. Oh, no, I mean, I'm more talking about civil servants um, and, you know, your, your NHS workers, your teachers, yeah. um, being public sector. You know, look, they're not going to get, they're going to have a pay freeze and everything else. You can well see the government being really harsh when it comes to pay rises there, 100%. But, yeah, no, you're I mean, look, Lehman Brothers. I think Lehman Brothers actually did a trillion in turnover something a crazy figure and they went so there isn't a private set i don't care how successful any private business is in whatever period they're not safe yeah i totally agree i totally agree you would think you were safe in a bank though wouldn't you and that's what my mum was saying back then she said you got a job for life and you know you, you get somebody who works in a bank they come to you they do a mortgage you think oh yeah like you just say pay slips that's fine and you used to think that at one time and you think what do you have ever thought about going self-employed? And, and I'd probably say there's more people going self-employed than there ever has been before. Um, I like being in the self-employed sector and I like helping self-employed clients because I think they get a bad rep. The only thing I would say is, and I agree what you're saying, Sean, certain lenders have gone down the forefront of almost um, kiboshing lending criteria for um, self-employed people. Like, for instance, the grants, you know, of course, amid COVID, you would take the grant to help support your business. But other lenders were saying, ah, you took a grant, so you must be you must be struggling. Well, actually, I'm not struggling. But if I had the business, I would have written it. So therefore, I take the grant. And the grant replaces the fact that I wouldn't have struggled if the COVID wasn't here. So, you know, other, other lenders take the stance exactly right. So I think from my point, it goes back to criteria and I do take, and I would take it as an opportunity. Yeah, I would actually. And I see next year as if I can help the self-employed uh, more than ever and work with lenders because we're part of a big network so we can shout a bit louder uh, than some other ones. And, and I take the feedback on board from self-employed that say, I feel like I can't get a mortgage. Well, I'll tell you what, your profits might be showing low, but there is such things as joint borrower sole proprietor these days as well. So it may be that we could tag on a family member who's got that job in the public sector that you mentioned, Sean, or has got stability in private sector, whatever it might be, tag them onto the self-employed. When the going comes back and COVID's history, and you know we're, we're riding high again, take that person off. Joint borrower sole proprietor is great. Don't pay the higher stamp duty, joint borrowers, uh, not on the deeds, et cetera. So, so there are other opportunities and that's where lenders come back. We need to see more creativity in the market. Um, and that's good. You know, if a self-employed came to me now and said, my profits are showing low at the minute. And I said, well, have you got your mum and dad? Yeah, they're mortgage free. Perfect. They've got an income. What's this? What's that? Are they employed? Are they self-employed? Are they retired? And I think the, the idea of being a broker is don't just speak to the individual that's in front of you, speak to the people that's behind them because you've got more opportunity then to actually help. And, and just, just recently, 
um, I had exactly that scenario. And I said, would your family help? And he went, every day of the week. He actually had the 15% deposit, but he didn't have the income. So dad's got on that particular mortgage now. Um, uh, and it's going through. In fact, it completes in a couple of weeks' time. But he wouldn't have been able to do that if it wasn't for a JBSP. Uh, and it flew through. And, and he had a bit of adverse credit as well. So if you're talking about markets, that was adverse credit, history of a DMP, uh, and he's, he was showing low in his profits, and I still got it through on a JBSP. So it's all about the knowledge, really. Yeah, that's pretty much where I stand on it, and opportunities. Interesting. If there was, if there was one takeaway, for, you know, for brokers next year, as well as obviously the first one, signing up to track a hub, of course. But if, oh, there was, cool. it, 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 if, if you know, if you're a self-employed broker um, and you're looking ahead to next year, what, what do you think would be one of the things you would either recommend to them if they came to speak to you, or you know, if, if you were chatting to them after a, except for COVID, after an event, what would be the thing you would say? Listen, like you know. I would really have a look at this or I'd really gear up um, for getting over this obstacle. What What do you think would be the biggest thing for them to be aware of to then be able to... Well, to yeah, to... I think it harks back to knowledge is power, actually, to be fair. I think knowledge is power. Um, I think getting your facts straight is another thing as well. So what sometimes we can be guilty of is not doing the fact find justice. We'll want to zip into saying, oh, I think I can help you. I think I can sort, I can sort that but actually, if you do it by stages, like we used to do in the old days, where you do the fact find properly and you do it fully, get to know the clients, get to know the family, get to know the remit of how things are working, and then move forward at a pace that you can keep up and do your research. And before you know it, you'll come up with something, a little gold that works. Um, and I think take that away with you. And I think that's what they're guilty of. Um, and then the other side as well is, and I'm not talking about tracker up here, but building your network speaking to your accountant, speaking to your solicitors, speaking to the estate agents, anybody that you think, ah, oh, do you know what? Social media is great. I mean, we do good news stories. So if anything, I'd probably say, look, when you do a good news story, like that lad with his dad and the joint borrower sole proprietor, obviously don't put the names on, but put the scenario on your social media page. Say, look, client came, client A came, dad B helped before you know it. And what I also do is how much we save people. I said on the Zoom call, I think uh, I think it was on this one, four years I took off a mortgage and say, and they only paid a little bit more per month, but I took four years off. And you think to yourself, they're good news stories. I put them on social media and they get thousands of hits. You know, I think one just the other day got two and a half thousand hits. Uh, they jumped onto our site, referred friends. And before you know it, we all need to be in it together. I think the best thing I would say to a broker is don't be alone, you know, I've got a tracker hub community. We're building a community on there and people are emailing me saying, how have you done it, Graham? How have you grown your business? Um, they're asking for, you know, how would it work if um, if I took more advisors on? Do you think it's an idea if I change my office space? Should I move at the minute, Graham? And I, it's more than just building a community. It's actually building a support group. Absolutely, yeah. So get onto tracker hub, get B2B and get, wise with your knowledge because honestly it's, it's going to be key to the future and success succession planning because i'm looking three years ahead and i think you probably are sean as well i think you're a man who looks far ahead as well so yeah yeah i mean like you say you the, the skill i suppose is trying to make sure because we all fall for it in that in that if you pass if your present is hard then you're going to look to the future and maybe spend too much time living in the future and if you do that you'll die in the present and then if you look in the present too much really down to luck for the future to be fair um and, and ideally the best people do both i suspect and the both the best businesses do both and i think probably in this sector as well i think they, they, they do themselves maybe down a little bit on the basis that compared to some of the other sectors that i've operated in there's far more and look it can still get a lot better but there's far more i would say community support and assistance to people like what you're referencing there in terms of, um, you know, I use law firms as a perfect example, that my view is if you don't speak to your neighbour, you could be out of business pretty soon. And the problem in law firms is they like to put a massive cloak over over my um, analogy of a skyscraper, if you like. And they're quite, they'd be quite happy for all the other skyscrapers to fall down. Yeah. It doesn't, it, it, it's, whether this, and that's not the individuals, there's a lot of great individuals in that sector, but there's, there's no, 
sharing of ideas in that way you know um, and in other sectors it's similar you know you, you know people will be you know i'm not saying what you reveal all your introducer list and go why don't you go and take my introducers off me i'm not i'm not saying anything as candid as that or silly as that but i do think that the ability to communicate and get proper support and advice from people who are actually living it it's like um you know a 20 year old business coach on instagram popping up and it's like give me a break mate it's like I, i'd actually rather i'd actually rather have someone that's failed yeah. I, I genuinely I, i'd rather have someone that's I even forget like success necessarily because it depends how long ago you succeeded no good telling me how you succeeded 10 years ago like facebook had only just been invented then that's like, right like you might have built your business 10 years ago on email marketing with an 80 percent open rate you know what what's that to me now in a way i'd rather have someone go do you know what i had i did this i did that this is where things went wrong that i mean you you, you know that's how you learn you fall over you get back up, you up. and to a certain extent i think that's crucial so yeah i think i do think uh, people in this sector are far better when they do reach out and that's what i would say is that if i would not hesitate for the doors that might get slammed in your face for the people that may not be that responsive, I would say it's well worth it. It's well worth kissing enough frogs to get the prince, if you see what I mean. Because when well, you're, you're definitely a prince, Sean, to me, my mate. You're definitely a prince mm -hmm. to me. But I, I, I think that is it, and I think don't be alone, you know, especially if it's a case that you are a one-man or one-woman band, because it can be a lonely job. I've never known a job. My dad was a lorry driver, and I feel as alone as him. When I'm just sat here, although you're talking to people you are still alone actually because it's down to yourself as the individual to get the job done and i agree with what you're saying sometimes as a broker we forget we can be the last chance saloon for somebody you know they'll go to the bank or they'll go online and if they get a decline the the shot they think my god my earth's imploded i can't do it and i'll be honest we've still been writing business amid covid and people have been gobsmacked because they've been turned down at the bank I've actually had it times where a certain bank's declined a mortgage. They've come to me as a broker, and I've got it agreed with that bank that declined them in the first place. How does that work? Unbelievable. So you think to yourself, there's something sadly wrong somewhere because the knowledge in the bank probably ain't there anymore, and they don't train them up correctly. And that's one thing I pride ourselves on. Knowledge is power. Training is key. And networking, honestly, there's nothing better. Speak it, and then what you can say then is if you have got tracker up or you've got other means of, sh of sharing information, how powerful is it in real time to give your introducers a dashboard? They become part of your business. They become part of your organization and, and your steer group. Um, but yeah, there's big things to come with it. We've got a lot of plans for it, but I think next year will be interesting as a broker. I'm, pr I'm, I'm proud of what we've achieved. In fact, I'm proud of what everybody's done in financial services across the UK. I think it's good. We just need to be a bit more creative and hope that everybody prospers and uh, yeah shameless plug i suppose we've got um we've got a, I, I think it's fantastic I, i'm biased of course i'm going to say that um but we've got a reputation enhancement piece which brokers can sign up to and um, basically the soft the software in essence it's you doing it all but in essence the software just automates it for you enabling you to get your client feedback at the end of the process if for whatever reason the, the client's not happy or hasn't had a five star um service from their end of things you're able to engage with them in a really straight way um, and keep them away from your review pages but handle them well and hopefully still get good responses from them in the future but if you do get them and of course you will then positive reviews they already go on your google your business listing page we've got huge guides that take you through step by step in a lunchtime as to how to get that set yeah. up and the key then is i won't bore you on this podcast because it'd be a podcast in its own right but basically you'll end up getting organic um, free. I'm not talking about paid advertising. You'll get online new leads coming through. But we also look after your past clients with things like personalised Christmas cards, personalised 12-month thank you cards going out. So the ability to try and tap into your past uh, client book to, to remind them subtly about either repeat business, the word of mouth, the personal touch, that all the things that everyone would agree and go you know what, I'd love my business to do that, but it's in quadrant D. It, it's not that important and it's not urgent. And the problem with quadrant D is you just never get around to quadrant D because 
A, a, and, a and B generally. So in quality. priority, don't they? Yeah, exactly yeah, right. So, you know, I think that's a great service for us because I don't think anyone's going to turn around and go, that, that, that's not what I would like to do. And even if you ram now, you get the benefit of these things six months, nine months, 12 months down the line. So check out the Mortgage Broker Club website for that as well. Um, I must say, um, Graham, you, uh, unbelievable unbelievable guest we have to get you on as often as possible you've been wow, you, say that, you say that to everybody I watch all your podcasts and you always say that they're unbelievable yeah. that is Steve Mulhern that's his word yeah I'll have to be very careful because obviously other, other people we've interviewed will be listening and be coming off. but um, you've been absolutely phenomenal pal um, thanks for having me Sean oh no well, thank you so much if you want any further information on track or which you must do please go and check out the website. Um, we're going to put tons of stuff on about them on our social media and on the Mortgage Broker Club website as well. If you're listening to this podcast, please um, share and spread the word about the show. Uh, if you're listening on Apple Podcasts, please hit us with a five-star review. And remember to check out the products and services at mortgagebrokerclub.co.uk and also on Tracker Hub. Uh, but more importantly, please stay well and take care. <laughs>